let's get it let's get it let's get it y'all know what time it is it is playoff time in the dml and roll to greatness has returned now what we're going to be doing today is sitting down with a couple of the teams that have made a playoff push all right we're going to ask these guys some tough questions and basically we're pretty much break down why they feel like they have the best shot at winning a dml banner this postseason so we ain't gonna hold y'all up let's dive into these conversations Coming in, we got Vitamin, the owner of those Dallas Cowboys. What's going on, Vitamin? What's going on, Mark? All right, man, you know, man, welcome to Road to Greatness. I believe this is your first time jumping on the show. And you already know what's going on on the show, man. So let's talk, let's talk your squad, all right? Um, you had uh, a tough season. Uh, definitely looking at your schedule, you had um, a couple games that I felt like you definitely should have won, which uh, left a question mark in the air for me. But you... Uh, you know, you toughened it out. Uh, right now, you're leading your division, sitting at 9-6, and, and definitely uh, have a playoff slot secure. So, uh, you enter in this postseason with what I feel like one of the most balanced-style uh, offense with a solid rushing attack and a solid passing attack. Now, my question to you, my first question, is what's your mindset, you know, after hearing me say uh, you had some of them games um, that I felt like against certain users you should have won? Um, you're having a balance, uh, one of the best balance style offenses into the postseason. Do you feel like um, some of them L's that you took in the season, which you shouldn't have, could come back to haunt you in the postseason with all these heavy hitters in the NFC? Yeah, man, definitely. I mean, shit, it's not even guaranteed that we're going to make the playoffs, man. It's been a struggle, like, this whole entire cycle. Uh, mm -hmm. Just getting this, team, getting this team to try to perform right, man, and, and you know, do what's right. I mean, the offensive line is sometimes, you know, a lot of holding calls, you know, take away big plays from me. Defense don't react, man, sometimes. So I got to get these boys to act right, man. But if I can get these dudes to play right, you know, like I want them to, I think we can we can make some moves. How important is it for you to come out, like I just mentioned, with that balance style offensive mindset to not just want to chug it up down the field 150 times like you see in the league uh, so often? Like, what – what what like walk me through that like what's the thought process on that yeah man the thought process really man is just getting zeke involved man and pound pound the rock you know and um hopefully you know get some good positive yardage on first downs off the run man and that opens up everything else you know if, if we can do that and establish that you know i think i think i think we'll be good man to keep the defense off the field you know and uh you know defensively we got to get more stops man make more stops we're giving up a lot of run plays Playing pretty good as far as the pass goes, but uh, just got to tighten up on D a little bit. And like I said, get a little bit more, you know, early going on with the run with Zeke, man. I think that established everything for us. And, and this leads me to a guy who's definitely eating off of the productivity of Zeke. This guy, C.D. Lamb, who by far, in my opinion, is one of your best standout offensive weapons. And this guy, just right. on the season, man, just has been creating – play after play after play after play putting this team in the best position to secure w's do this team feed off cd lamb's energy because it seems like when this guy motor is going this offense is moving like a well-oiled machine so is this the energizer guy on his roster i mean he he is the energizer guy but we don't really want it to be that way man you know i don't want my receiver my best receiver to be the guy that sets shit off right i'd rather have zeke set it off with the run game and then feed cd you know, as need be. Mm -hmm. But one thing about CD, man, whenever I throw him the ball, whenever we look towards him, he's always ready, man. He's going to make it happen. Uh, he, he's a monster. Okay, so we broke down a couple things um, about your team. Now, what the, the, one of the most hard and difficult questions to answer on this show, because some guys try to avoid the smoke and some guys don't. <laughs> now, we're looking at this playoff bracket, right? The right. NFC, all the teams that are locked, right? We're not locked, but have... Their slots so far, uh, so far secured. We have the Green Bay Packers at the number one slot. We have the San Francisco 49ers at the number two slot. You sit currently at the number three slot with New Orleans underneath you, the Arizona Cardinals, those Detroit Lions, and the Minnesota Vikings. Looking at that bracket, what team do you feel like you want to run into? And what team do you want to avoid? <laughs> Nah, man, we don't look to avoid nobody, man. That's that's never been my mindset, man. We're gonna play whoever we play. 
I don't like to look at a team and say, oh, yeah, this user, he might not be this, he might not be that. I don't even look at it like that. Man. So, you know, we'll pretty much play anybody, you know, that's, uh, that makes the playoffs if we get there. You know what I'm saying? But right now, I'm matched up against Taz. Mm -hmm. that, that, that may flip because I just lost my last game. But, you know, Taz got the best of me uh, like two or three games ago, man. So, I definitely owe Taz. So, if, if, if I do match up with him, I think that'll be another good game. Okay, okay, okay. All right, man, we hope we wish you the best of success on achieving greatness this postseason as long as you're not playing against those Packers. Appreciate you hopping <laughs> on. Anytime, Murray. Right. Next up, we got Sweets, the owner of those New England Patriots and the defending Super Bowl champ. What's going on, Sweets? Yo, yo, what up, man? All right, man, you you, you you entering another postseason in the DML. Um, you currently sitting at uh, 10 to 6, which is a wild card slot, I believe. And let's talk New England football. All right, you, you, you hung the banner last year. You got the monkey off your back. You did it with your real-life team. Um, you ran through, I believe, the, the best AFC uh, playoff bracket that was set up. Um, as far as talent wise, but here you go again, man, having to do it again. So I feel like um your, your team is in a little slump. Uh, let's talk Mac Jones first, okay? Uh, all the beautiful uh uh the bells and the whistles is there, but I noticed this year, which you really often see this with one of your quarterbacks when he has thrown more interceptions than touchdowns. So what's going on with Mac Jones? Is he uh is the play caller switching up? Is he forcing uh the ball in uh, tight windows? Like, what's going on with Mac Jones this season? Man, I tell you what. Um, so I realized that I couldn't keep with the same pace on uh, like running and 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 getting to the same receivers. So I got to make these young receivers a little better. So I've been kind of playing a little recklessly, throwing the ball a whole lot when I don't need to and trying to catch scenarios here and there. Uh, you know, I got Mac up to what I need to, but I got to get this this really, really young receiving core up. And so, you know, I've just been kind of, you know, hey, hey, trying to uh, try to get them, them youngins up, man, mm -hmm. trying to get all these scenarios. You know how it is. Man. I know, I know, I know. I know. Force passes, you don't need to. You do things you don't really have to. So, it reflected my stats where I got more interceptions than touchdowns this year. Uh, but don't let it fool you. You know what I mean? In the playoffs, you got to play smart. You 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 know, we we still run the ball. We got a really, really good, reliable running back that kind of flies under the radar of some of you other outstanding running backs in the league. But he's there. You know, when playoff time is here, man, we're going to try to give it our best. You know what I mean? Go for number two. Okay. Okay. Now, let's, let's talk uh, bracket-wise. Okay? Because you got... Um, the Jags who you played this season, you managed to win that game uh, twenty right. over 28-24. You have the Chiefs who you might c can play in that first round, who uh, you took a loss to 43-50, to 50, which was a shootout. And then you have tight work who you could possibly run into if you get out of the first round. Now, in each one of those games, okay, I noticed that your, your, your defense who by far last year – was clicking it, it was right. on the same pace with this uh it was on the same pace with the offense and it, it things just was clicking the secondary seemed to take a, a step back being ranked currently right now 21st in the league do you feel like the lack of the pass rush is exposing the secondary or is it just guys are just getting open uh you know what man i i, I definitely agree with the lack of pass rush not getting there you know, I, I made a, a probably an all-time low as far as getting sacks right now, and I give up a whole lot of scramble, you know, third downs and stuff like that. My leading sacker, I think, right now is my middle linebacker, who's a coverage linebacker, and that's never good. You know what I mean? I, mm -hmm. I paid a lot of guys on my defense a lot of money to get to the damn quarterback. So, you know, it, it may be a thing where I need to blitz a little bit more, uh, bring a little bit more pressure and stop sitting back. Um, but, you know, the secondary is taking his lumps and bruises this year. But, man, we got to be on our A game when it comes to these uh, AOC teams, man. It's loaded, and uh, a lot of guys like to pass. So we definitely got to be finding it in the playoffs. You know what I mean? All right, and, and you know that leads me to my last question, man. My last question. And I'm going to have to correct myself because I feel like this year 
bracket is more loaded than the Super Bowl run bracket that you ran last year. Okay, so you got tight right now at the number one slot. You have Gav at the number two slot. You have Styles with the Chiefs at the number three slot. KP with the Ravens at the number four slot. I ain't even going to say Addy. I'm going to say Robot Nick Chubb at the number five <laughs> slot. You're currently at the number six slot. Then you have the scheme with those Las Vegas Raiders at the number seven slot. What team would you rather, you, you know, you're saying is knock off the head and the body of drop. So who do you feel like in this AFC playoff bracket is the head? That will if you if you if you knock it off will make the rest of it mm. just crumble. Man, um, you know I think I guess you got to go with the uh, the leaders, man. The, uh, the tight works, the the uh, the Chiefs and the Jags. So those three are some of the biggest names and some of the best players in the AFC and in and, and they uh, record this year showed it. So I would have to say I got to get one of them guys in the first round. Uh, just to know that I'm worthy of being there, you know what I mean? So, uh, that I'm not just out here bullshitting. So I got to get one of them guys, and we got to we got to prevail. Um, uh, KP and the Ravens is another one, man. He he can come out and he can fire it up. You know, Lamar can do everything, and and he, he runs around like crazy. Uh, so he's another one, but he gets a little tense in the playoffs sometimes. So you know, he's not gonna be in my top three. I'm gonna go with the guys that you know right now, but. But but and then uh, you said uh, Andy for yeah uh, Mr. Chubb himself mm-hmm. yeah man I mean you know what it is it's it's he gonna run it to that light under his feet light up and then he gonna run it some more and so that's his thing um, you know I don't want to see him because I don't want to deal with the headache him and SJ that run game with them two dudes man is ridiculous uh, but but you know I gotta see the top guys man we we want the top to know that we worthy of being there all right man y- y'all heard it straight from Sweets man I appreciate you jumping on the show. Appreciate it, man. Have a good one. Next, we got Marley, the owner of those New Orleans Saints. What's going on, Marley, man? Welcome to Road to Greatness. Hey, yo, what's good, OG? What's up, Dynasty? All right, man, you know what's going on with this show. Let's talk New Orleans football. All right, you come in right now uh, with a whopping lead over your division mates with C-Rob chilling right behind you, but I feel like uh, with the rest with one or two weeks left you got that uh division crown locked up so let, let's just dive right into it looking at the way your division is shaped up okay um do you feel like with the lack of competition in the division that that uh it's possible that you could fall asleep behind the steering wheel entering the postseason with so many heavy hitters out there with you know uh vitamin and the chicago expert and those Cardinals, I said Vitamin Chicago, my fault. The Cowboys, expert with those Arizona Cardinals, the Packers, the 49ers. Do you feel like um, with the lack of talent in your division that there's a possibility that these Saints could fall asleep behind the stairwell in the, in the postseason? No, nah, not really. I mean, I, I think uh, I'm not the, the greatest Madden player of all time, but I always felt like I, I played my best games against better competition. Mm-hmm. That's not a knock to my division mates. I mean, I feel like, you know, a lot of people might look at our division and say that we might be one of the worst. But in, in reality, I think we're the most balanced. We're just four dudes who casually play Madden. You know, we don't study it. It's not a whole lot of labbing going on. We're just having fun playing the game. Mm-hmm. But yeah, in terms of me specifically, I, I think I play my best against higher competition. So I'll be ready for the playoffs. Okay, okay, okay. Now, looking at a couple, just a couple of your, uh, looking at your schedule, looking at a couple of your losses, I noticed that the turnover, turnovers was high. He was throwing a lot of INTs. What type of uh, uh, offense uh, team is, the, is this? Is it a pass first uh, offense type scheme, or is it a run heavy type offensive scheme? Or is it just a balance, you know, attack that Marley just comes out, just play it 50 50 straight down the middle? Well, I definitely uh, lean towards being more of a runner than a passer. Mm-hmm. I've never excelled as a passer. I think I'm decent at it. I've always excelled as a runner. But our, our true identity as a team, I think we're pretty balanced. I mean, if you across the board, if you look at the stats, the run stats, the passing stats, 
I get everybody involved pretty much. You know, it, I go with the with the hot hand. So if my passing game is working, I'll roll with it. But if I get the run game going, of course I'm gonna I'm gonna run it down your throat and try to kill as much clock as I can. Okay, now let's talk. I want to talk running backs because you have a, a, a loaded stable back there. Okay, you had Javon Hawkins who came off of a spectacular season uh, last year, and then you went out and you drafted Dudley. Cofield, who's having by far a great campaign this season. Um, do these two guys right here that I just mentioned play a major, major role in the New Orleans Saints success throughout the postseason? Can he are these two guys is this team being placed on these two guys' shoulder to carry them as far as possible as they can go throughout this postseason? Uh they're definitely a, a big a big cog in my offense. I mean, I feel like the run game opens up the offense. Okay. You know, I got a, I got a one-two combo of speed and power. Mm-hmm. So once I get you playing up into the box, that's when I go for the top. I, like, I got three capable receivers and a really good tight end and uh, a great old line to go with it. So, yeah, when we, it starts with the run game, we get it opened up with the run game. Like I, my, my goal coming in, if you look at the stats, you probably see that Kamara doesn't really touch the ball or see the field. Mm-hmm. So I, that's more or less just the way I like to build. Like I knew coming in that Kamara wouldn't be available for high stakes, so he would be a shell of his step of himself back then. So of course I went with the Louisville boy Hawkins, and uh, I picked up a power back in the draft, and you know, that, those are going to be my backs for the cycle. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Now um, let's talk points. Okay, because right now you're putting up a whopping 32 points per game and you're giving up a total of 29. And that margin is not too great. How can you flip the strip on this to get this defense clicking just enough to where though it's putting your team in the best position to secure some W's? Uh, more than anything, I got to limit big plays. I, I feel like across the board, defense has been horrible for it's been going on three seasons now largely in part is that I, I I completely tore apart my secondary mm-hmm. so I got two rookies playing safety low overall rookies at that and I'm still developing my second cornerback my nickel back I got a great number one corner but that's it so okay. I cry me if you look at my stats on daddy Lee's it's, it's it's bad on the defensive side. Uh, I have no, I've always prided my game on my defense, and as it looks right now, we like 30, 32, 30, 31, 32, and and offensive yards giving up, um, running rushing yards giving up, passing yards giving up. Defense is horrible, but that starts also in the trenches. Like I, my big man has been, I haven't had my 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 three four defense. I haven't had my three. Mm-hmm. together but for about five or six games so I think that, that plays a large part in it okay so I mean I feel like if I, if I get back to playing my style of defense I, I'll be able to make a run at it but obviously Madden 21 and Madden 22 is polar opposites as far as defense mm-hmm. that's just something I haven't picked up yet okay okay so now, so now it, it, the closing question alright you have you have these teams sitting currently right now in the, in the, uh, on the playoff bracket, playoff bracket on the NFC side. Now, what I want to know is, what team would you rather play early if things can line up in your favor, and which team would you rather avoid to later on, like that NFC Championship title game? We have the Green Bay Packers sitting in the number one slot, the San Francisco 49ers sitting in the number two slot, the Cowboys number three slot. You're currently sitting in the number four slot. You have the Arizona Cardinals in the number five slot. The Detroit Lions underneath them, and the Minnesota Vikings. Now, you know some people dodge that smoke, and some people just say it for how they feel. So, walk me through it. Who you would rather avoid the later, and who would you rather play early if, you, if things can line up in your way? Well, I'm not going to get the, the guy that I would want to play first because he's most likely going to win the. Yeah, he's going to get the bye. But Ramsey's the only person out of that bracket that I haven't beat before. He, I've, I've play, probably played him between guys and Blueprint about five or six times. And I've never, I don't think I've ever had a close game against him. Mm-hmm. So, so, you know, that, that kind of sits on. I mean, I'd rather get the what I look at 
in terms of uh, head to heads. I'd rather get that game out of the way first. If I can get that one, I feel like my confidence to be high enough, confidence to be high enough against any of the other opponents, and knowing that I have beat them before, you know, and I can square up any, any day and get it done. Okay, okay, okay. All right, man. So you know, we wish you the best of luck uh, achieving greatness this postseason. Unless you come in the Lambo to play those Green Bay Packers, but I appreciate you jumping on the show, man. I appreciate you, OG. Five, four, three, two, one. Next up, we got Gav, the owner of those Jacksonville Jaguars. Gav, what's going on, Gav? Welcome to Road to Greatness, man. Welcome back to Road to Greatness, actually. Man, Toxic Poppy is in the building. What's going on, baby? All right, now, you know, man, you you know, you came on last cycle, uh, right before the postseason. You, you burnt the booth down. You, you, melt, you, uh, you melted the mic. But things didn't go how Gav said it, that they were going to go. Is that still the same energy this year entering the postseason coming off of another spectacular season? Of course, man. I mean, last year definitely came on here to talk that hot shit. Uh, lost my best receiver, dog. Lost my best receiver before the playoffs. Lost two games to H-Blow and SJ inside zone me to death first round. So... We, we definitely didn't back it up last year. This year we came back, man, switched it up a little bit, got a new playbook on the O. Um, so we, we doing a little things different, but yeah, man, same same intensity, same fire. We, we battling for that one seed right now. We got a big, big game with them Ravens uh, this week. Mm-hmm. But we fighting for that one seed in the AFC. Hopefully we can get that by, but but if we don't, man, we, we raising hell from week one or the, the wild card weekend. So let's get it. All right, all right so let's, let's talk. You know, you know, you know I, I got to go to it because this was – I felt like the Achilles heel last year, and, and it seems like it's, it's still it's still lurking around the same time that it was lurking last year, and, and it's just the defense against the run. What is it about Jacksonville that these guys just can't stop the run? Because anything other than the run, y'all y'all spectacular. Y'all know how to get after the ball. Y'all uh, are solid against the passing attack. Uh, they're solid against not allowing guys to put up no more than 23 points per game. So what is it about the rushing attack that Jacksonville just can't stop? I'm going to keep it a buck with you, dog. <laughs> well, you got to play motherfucking uh, JT twice a year. Mm-hmm. And, and I think he'd probably get 200 yards. I, I give him the 200 yards a game because you just going to have to beat me running the ball at this point. But him, I got to play him twice a year. And I had to play Nick Chubb this year. And if, if, you, ain't, if you ain't seen what that boy doing, listen. I don't even want, yo, that's, that's the, sh- man, listen, that's, I played him, that's Robot, Robot Chubb, that's his nickname, Robot Woo. Chubb. So, I mean, other than, other than three games, um, the defense, to be honest with you, at the run, we've been a lot better, man, especially, uh, last game we played C-Rod, man, old Christian McCaffrey, we held him to, I believe, seven rushes for, like, seven yards, mm-hmm. so, especially coming around playoff time, man, I feel great about my run defense, um, Especially so, we 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 had some 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 gaping holes early in the season, man. And and them motherfuckers three people three games we gave up probably 700 yards rushing the ball. But but since then, man, we didn't we didn't toned it down. I'm feeling confident going into the playoffs. We got we got Mr. Cole and Miles Jack uh, looking to have 100 yard 100 tackle seasons again this mm. season. So so we looking to make some noise, man. Especially against that run defense, we want y'all to run the ball for real, for real. Do it, I dare you. Ooh, all right, let's talk offense because this offense, I think. It feeds all this. This offense reminds me of the real life Kansas City Chief offense. It's just one moment they're they're sitting there, and I feel like they're just always one play away from blowing the top off any game and any user that they're playing. So, do you feel like with this offense being so high powered that I mean you could score five seconds, you know? Uh, 30 seconds. Do you feel like sometimes that tends to put this team in bad uh, situations? I, I, I'm, I'm going to take it a step further, man. Playing and looking for those those one-shot players, to be honest with you, mm-hmm. is is probably the worst I can play. So so that mindset, to be honest with you, I try to I try to take take out completely. Um, just try to go methodical down the field, man. If it's open, I'm going to take it. But but I'm not looking for those big plays, man, because when you, when you look for those big plays, that, that shit comes and bites you in the ass and 
he throw picks and I, I, now nah, I'm just trying to focus, man. I even got the run game in it a little bit these last couple of weeks. We done had two straight games with 100 yards rushing, so we're just trying to be methodical, man. We want the big plays, yeah, but I'm 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 I'm, I'm gonna take this shit one bite at a time and gnaw your ass to sleep and then and then we'll come over the top. Is Trevor Lawrence the guy to get this team over the hump? Man, Trevor Lawrence the best quarterback in the DML. Woo! Hands down, bar. Say, bar say down. that again so the people in the back can hear you, man. The the best quarterback in the DML. This probably about to be three straight seasons of five thousand yards, three straight seasons leading in passing touchdowns, three straight seasons leading in passing yards. I mean, the man is unstoppable. When when y'all find somebody better, tell me, please. <laughs> uh, y'all heard it from him, man. So then that here's the last and close the final question. And you and you know what this question is already. The playoff, the AFC cannot cannot be even more loaded than it is right now. I mean, I feel like it has the the best of the AFC in in, in the playoffs this year. I feel like this, like I said before in the previous interview, I feel like this is the loadedest bracket I have seen so far. And of course, 23 seasons, but this is the loaded I ever I have ever seen it. Literally, every guy that's in. This bracket has over 10 plus wins, uh, and, and it's just ridiculous. But let, let's talk about it, okay? Um, who would you rather play first? You got, you got to give me a team, and who would you rather avoid until like the AFC Championship round? You got tight work with the Dolphins sitting one game, well, actually, uh, yeah, one game above you. You have uh, Styles and those Chiefs. Right up beneath you have KP and the Baltimore Ravens, Robot Chubb and those Cleveland Browns, Sweets and those New England Patriots, and you have the Schemer, man, making his first playoff run at a banner this season with this cycle with the Las Vegas Raiders. So I need two teams. Who would you rather, if you could line it up to where you could play any, any team in this bracket first, and who would you rather avoid and play last around that AFC uh, round? Well, the second question, we ain't scared of nobody. So that question we ain't going to answer. Okay. But the first question, um, even as loaded as it is, man, it's some easy teams. I and mean, a couple dudes that I love to play first. One is Styles. Wait, wait, Styles. wait, 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 wait. We ain't going to skip past that. <laughs> Y'all heard the key word. He said easy. Easy, but, but 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 carry on, carry on. Carry on. I, I'll uh, uh, the teams that you said. I say it's probably too easy. I ain't, ain't probably. It's too easy win. Schemer, that's a dub. He, he loaded that team. Loaded now, but that's a dub. And Styles, St- Styles don't want this smoke. So Ooh. that's two easy wins. But everybody else, I keep it a buck. Um, I think if I had to play sweets, great game. But I'm never picking against myself. Tight mm-hmm. again, man. You got all the heavy hitters. Mm-hmm. With, with great records this year, man. You got tight work coming back, leading the, the, the AFC strong with them Dolphins. And you know he's always a contender. We always talk about him, but he's here now at that mm-hmm. number one slot. Mm-hmm. Sweets, his record might not be up up there with all the other two lost teams we got, but you can never count him out. The man just won a Super Bowl. And then you got Forrest and Pope, man. So I honestly think this might be the most excited I've been for a playoff run because you know you got to come with your A game every fucking week, man. This is going to be fun. Oh, yeah. All right, man. Y'all heard it from Mr. Gav Toxic of the lead himself. Appreciate you jumping on the show, man. Yes, sir. Y'all be easy.